Fall weather definitely calls for soup. And what says happy fall, y'all, better than butternut squash soup? Hey folks, my name is Joyce Manalo, certified health coach. Nice to meet y'all. Thanks so much for stopping by. I make videos for people who want to start or refresh their healthy habits, and cooking at home is a great way to elevate your nutrition. By the end of this video, your crock pot will be in full use, and you will have a go-to soup for the fall or a rainy day. And if you have leftovers, put it in a jar like this to give it to your neighbors or freeze it for later. Let's get started. What you're gonna need for this recipe is a crock pot, a half a cup of broth. Now this is a vegan version, so I'm using Edward and Sons Not Chicken Bouillon Cube, okay? And half a cube is good enough for a half a cup of water that's been dissolved. Then reserve a third cup of coconut milk for later when everything's been stewing for hours. Then we have our spices here, just a pinch of salt, one teaspoon of dried sage, and this sage I actually dried myself a few weeks ago. Um, we have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. All right. Then we have a saute of two medium onions and half a bulb of garlic that I made earlier and three pounds worth of fresh butternut squash that has been skinned, seeded, and cubed up for this recipe. All right, let's build this soup. Let's add our liquids first, then our seasonings, okay. I do have a spatula here on hand at all times. Then we have the sauteed aromatics, onions and garlic. Ooh, yum, that smells good. And then we have our butternut squash. Okay, very good. And let's cover that. All right, let's set this on high for about four hours. All right, it's been four hours. Let's take a look at our butternut squash. Okay, it looks like it's still whole, but oh wow, it is really soft, you guys. So let's add our third cup of coconut milk and stir this up. Now, if you have a hand blender, you can blend right into the crock pot itself. But if you don't have a hand blender like me and have an actual blender, just wait for this to cool for about 30 minutes before you start blending in here. All right guys, I actually transferred the mixture from the crock pot to a separate bowl to help it cool and I have been stirring it um, occasionally in the 30 minutes. But if you don't want to stir it as often, maybe wait another 15 minutes before you start blending it up. And I have my blender set up here and I also have extra coconut milk just in case to loosen this soup up, this mixture. And I also have a ball jar container that holds four cups and I will be pouring some of the soup in here because I know I can't consume it all and I hate wasting food, but I love butternut squash soup and I can enjoy it later. If you like what you're seeing so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below or connect with me on Instagram or Facebook at Kala Health and Wellness. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Um, we'll take this bowl and kind of pour in some of this mixture. Okay. And again, it's important to do this in batches. Blend until smooth. Okay. That looks good. And I'm gonna put that in this container. Okay. And I'm going to Work on another batch. Blend this up. Okay. 
That looks great. I'll just fill this container up. Perfect. And I'll add the rest to the crock pot. Okay, now that it's in the crock pot, I can see that this is a little too thick for me. So I'm going to add a little bit of coconut, maybe a quarter cup, and see how it looks just to loosen up the soup. All right, now this is the desired consistency that I like and texture, so I'm just gonna let this heat up for a little bit and serve it with an optional fried sage leaf. This soup definitely smells like fall and I love to have a little fried sage leaf on top to accentuate that it is autumn. Let's give it a try. Ooh, that is crispy. Mmm. It definitely tastes the way it smells, so that's a bonus. And definitely a little tropical from the coconut milk. Definitely give this a try. If you're not into coconut milk or the vegan version, it's all good. You can use any plant-based creamer or heavy cream. Let me know how this recipe turns out for y'all in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share, or hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. And if you have, thank y'all so, so much. Remember, you deserve to be happy and healthy. Catch y'all at the next episode.